It's been one week since Russia first invaded Ukraine, and with over 500 casualties already recorded, Russia is still looking to strengthen its offense against its neighbor. Bella Toledo with the report. Russian missiles have reduced these homes in Zitomir, western Kyiv, into rubble. Ukrainian authorities said four residents, including one kid, were killed by the missile that hit this residential area. Over in the capital city of Kyiv, a television tower was likewise bombed by Russian forces. Fire and thick smoke enveloped the tower after the explosion, which also left five civilians dead. Meanwhile, in Kharkiv, the second largest city in Ukraine, a government building was reduced to embers after another missile strike. Russian forces also targeted apartment buildings, leaving corpses and debris strewn across the streets. The Russian government earlier denied that this is an invasion. Instead, they said they're just launching, quote, special military operations in Ukraine. But Russian forces have already taken over many parts of the country, including the southern port city of Kherson. That's why Ukrainians have been scrambling to flee through the western border to make it through Poland, Moldova, or Hungary. According to the United Nations, more than 500 individuals have died from this invasion, while 600,000 civilians have been forced to evacuate. Many countries have enforced economic sanctions against Russia, but President Vladimir Putin seems unfazed. And U.S. President Joe Biden had choice words for his counterpart in his latest State of the Union address. Six days ago, Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He With the Russian invasion still underway, repatriation efforts for Filipinos in Ukraine are still in full gear. Earlier this week, 13 OFWs arrived at Denaiya after fleeing Ukraine. Among the repatriated Filipinos is Lorraine, who has only spent half a year in the European country. Yung siren po, tsaka po yung putokan niya. Kasi nung first day po, ano eh, bali hindi pa po ako pinapayagan na umalis. Magantay pa po daw ako three days. So nung first day, close na po lahat ng lip ng building namin. So hindi na po ako pumayag na hindi makaalis dun sa amo ko. According to the DFA, around 140 Filipinos are still in Ukraine and most of them do not want to exit the country. Most, most if not all of them are undocumented because we stopped deployment in 2014. So yung mga sila, wala talaga sila, I mean, they are, they are in an irregular status. So usually, you have to get their consent. No? The Philippine government recognizes the impact of Russia's invasion in our own country's food and energy security. That's why President Duterte met with police and military officials as well as business leaders to discuss this issue.